In lab four, we're going to learn all about switch case statements. Switch case statements are pretty powerful. Um, and it's, they're used quite commonly. Well, if your first case, you know, um, you have an apple, you can decide not to eat it, you can decide to eat it, or you can decide to have a friend eat it. This is their example, but it's a good example. Your switch case statement says, um, you know, it's going to be one of these cases here to choose from. And switch case statements are pretty powerful. You can have, have as many as you'd like. So let's add a switch case statement to our code here. So let's go down to the, um, before the last uh, curly bracket in the main function. So we have void main here. Let's go to the last curly bracket. right here right after sin move I click enter and now I'm going to change whose turn it is put my note in here okay under that line I'm going to type switch whose turn spell it right Adley so now I'm going to since this is a function this gets uh, opening and closing curly bracket right you know it's right so what I type inside the curly brackets I can type case one. Under this line, I'm going to add a couple uh, curly brackets. See, we're nesting, aren't we? And see how that works? See how you have the layers that kind of indent in? That really helps you with your coding. So next I'm going to put case 2, right? Of course I am. Can't capitalize it. You guys got to watch your capitalizations. Once again, curly brackets because it's a function. Inside the curly brackets for case one, I'm going to put whose turn equals two. Well, I better indent that. Case two is whose turn equals one. Don't forget your semicolons. Folks, you got to remember that a computer is just a machine. All it reads are lights on and lights off, right? That's what computer code is, ones and zeros. So you got to remember, computers do things in order. That's why you have n is equal to 2 and you can't have 2 is equal to n, right? because it has to be in a certain order because that's the way computers are. In this case, the computer reads the code from top to bottom. And so, um, since whose turn is equal to one, it turns the case into one. But it never gets to equaling two, so we're going to change that real quick. So what does the command break mean? It means to stop running the code inside the command. In this, state, in this case, end the switch. It'll change whose turn it is, and then it will leave, so it won't go to the second um, turn. So if this first case is true, what this will do is it will take it out of the switch so that this case 2 is not going to run right after case 1 runs. 
So normally what happens with the computer is it run, well, would run case one and then it would run case two. So you'd always have player one having a turn. That This pulls you out of the situation. That's what we're talking about here with the command break. So that is why in case one here we're going to add a break command. Just type it in here after whose turn is two tab. Just type break. Put your little semicolon in there. So now we're going to tell, have it put the X in. So I'm going to put in here board move equals X. And don't forget your uh, semicolon at the end. So obviously now i got to put the board too so I can put an X in there uh, wherever they want that um, movement to go. I got board move equals O for the other guy. Oh, and I made a mistake here. You got to put single um, single quotation marks, not double. The reason we don't use capital letters in here for the X and the O is that a lot of people mix up the the capital O with a letter zero. I mean, with the number zero. So now that we've got the moves in, we want to the program to update the board with the latest player move. So you want to show the board again. So you're going to um, add this. We're going to call the show board statement. I'm sure, sorry, the show, show board function. So I'm going to go right before the last uh, bracket in the main statement, right here. I'm going to click enter, and I'm going to show the board. So now before I move on to lab 5, I'm going to run the debugger. Debug. Start debugging. Yes. Then you go as far as it will take you. Player 2, enter your name. So let us your turn. Enter the number of the spot. So I put my number in. And of course I want to run it without debugging. I, with start without debugging. It should take me as far as that. And there you go. That's the end of, uh, of lab four.